Hello, hello, hello. Good day, everyone. Hi, this is Dr. Yvette coming from somewhere in the United States. Yes, I'm off traveling again. So, um, uh, let me straighten myself up here. Okay, there we go. So, I am Yvette McQueen, MD, uh, emergency physician and travel doctor, a global physician on a mission to educate about health, travel wellness, and disease prevention. So welcome to the medical chat room with Dr. Yvette. So for November, if you've been following me, I've been, it's November is Diabetes Awareness Month. And so each Saturday I've been coming to you, uh, telling you something about Diabetes 101. I don't like the way that looks. Gotta get it straight, you know? Okay, so <coughs> today, I'm gonna talk about nutrition, uh, diabetes and nutrition, how you eat, um, how you cook, eating out, things like that. So diabetes 101. So we talked about diabetes, the different type of diabetes, whether it's type one, use insulin, type two, where you can use pills or insulin. Uh, we talked about gestational diabetes. Uh, the previous week we talked about, uh, as far as treatment, uh, the different type of treatments there are out and what your doctor may order. You know, you monitor monitoring your diabetes with your hemoglobin A1C. Uh, once again, uh, if you're less than 5.7, you're normal. 5.7 to 2.4 is um, pre-diabetes and over 6.4, uh, you're a diabetic and you need to be on some medication and some control because uh, diabetes out of control will uh, eventually weaken the blood vessels, ca cause um, heart disease, cause kidney disease, cause eye disease, cause limb am amputation, and we don't want that. It can be controlled. So today I'm talking about nutrition, and we know we got the holiday coming up that, that a lot of people like to eat. So this will be helpful as far as when you go start to plan your menu and get your ingredients for your dinner for next Thursday, okay? So, um, diabetes and nutrition. So, one of the things with diabetics, uh, they say try to eat um, the same time each day. And I know it can be flexible, and it's and some people like even me for a varied schedule. I work night shift. I have to schedule my meals accordingly because you're scheduling with the medicine. So, the medicine is to reduce your glucose. So, if you take your medicine and don't eat, your glucose is going to drop. And when your glucose drops, when it drops under 100, you get very lethargic. And lethargic means like this. You just, you can't think, you lose your mind. People start profusely sweating. You can actually pass out and if it gets too low, like in 30s, you can actually die. So that's why you don't want your glucose to drop too low. Or if you start to feel that you know you're getting dizzy and lethargic and um, sweaty and things like that maybe pop some candy or some sugar in your mouth just in case okay that you know you took your medicine and no you didn't eat uh, diabetics I'm gonna just throw this on a sideline diabetics probably should be wearing a bracelet or a necklace to let people know that they're diabetic so that when we when we go say what's wrong what's wrong we can say oh they're diabetic maybe we can give them sugar because if we give you sugar and it's too high, it's okay. But if we give you sugar and it's already low and you wake up, that's wonderful. It's great, okay? So you should try to eat the same time each day because that's very helpful. So when it comes to foods, eating as um, diabetics, your doctor, hopefully when they diagnosed you as a diabetic, um, they provided diabetic education uh, and a nutritionist for you. And most insurance will pay for that for at least for you to know how to tailor your meals. Then uh, diabetics will be put sometimes on a calorie diet as sometimes they say 1500 ADA adult daily, you know, uh, account of calories, or they'll say 1800. Uh, the normal is uh, 2100 for adults, right? Believe it or not, uh, a Big Mac is what, 1100? So you. You, you eat a Big Mac, you've already eaten. You know how you go in there, you look at a meal, 1,100, 1,200, just for one sandwich, and you go, okay, that's half of my daily calories in one 
one, one, one sandwich, not even the rest of it, just one sandwich. So think about that when you're eating and you're seeing um, um, the calories associated with it. So if you're eating three meals a day and two snacks in between, so three meals a day, I try to tell people to try to make sure their three meals are 500 calories and under each uh, meal. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 500 calories under. Or if you're going to have more calories at one meal, try to put it in the middle at your lunch time because then it gives you time to actually have activity and you're not uh, going to sleep on it. Also, in between, you can have 100 calorie meals. That's like an apple, a half an apple, a half a banana, you know, 10... 10 almonds uh, they actually have packs now that says 100 calories so you know what um, the calorie is for your snacks when uh, you look at carbohydrates and they'll tell you well you've heard this too if you're diabetic you need to man monitor your carbohydrates so it's not telling you to stop your carbohydrates it's just tell you to manage it and so you know you, you have to know the difference between the starchy carbohydrates and your non-starchy carbohydrates because your body takes carbohydrates in and turn it into the sugar the glucose that your cells need so uh, and when it breaks it down to the small molecules so uh, the starchy ones though are turns it into what we call the the simple sugars so um, those are your potatoes and your corn you need that where your non-starchy carbohydrates are your vegetables so I tell people to try to increase their vegetables so uh, your vegetables like um, non-starchy or broccoli or or greens or peppers or tomatoes you know starchy like I said is your potatoes and um, your corn uh, you want to have some fruits and there's a difference fruits you uh, between the melons versus the um, the strawberries the more citrusy the more citrusy the less starch it is also you have your whole grains you want to think about your whole grains you want to stay with your whole grains which is your wheat your oats um, your quinoa um, those are things that you want to look at for that uh, and when you till in with protein your protein can be meat you can deal with meat which is like your chicken and turkey without the skin or your protein can also can be beans or peas chickpeas those are good protein uh, you want to get the fish um, and there's always the good and the bad uh, fish and your eggs those are your protein uh, your nuts uh, your walnuts or your almonds uh, when you get go to your dairy, you want to um, stay with the low fat or no fat, basically no fat. See, diabetes and heart healthy diet kind of runs in the same, so you can do it all together. You remember because the heart and diabetes and hypertension, they all play together. So you want to stay with your cheeses, your low fat cheeses, your no fat cheeses. Um, when you... And they, when they talk about alcohol, drinking alcohol, you got to remember, alcohol is made from a grain. Most alcohol is made from grain and high sugar. But believe it or not, the ethanol, which is alcohol that we drink every day, actually can lower your blood sugar. And I'm not saying use that to lower your diabetes. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you take an insulin and you're drinking large consumption of alcohol, you can actually reduce your blood sugar too low, where it's under that 100 and most people are like, oh, they're drunk, but they actually low blood sugar, and people have died from that. So be careful of that. Also, uh, if you're um, drinking uh, along with taking your insulin. So I like to tell people to use the plate method. Uh, remember, each meal probably should be 500 calories of less. Uh, so, but you use the plate le method, and you can actually go to choosemyplate.gov. It's called choose. C H O O S E myplate.gov and it shows you uh, the plate method and the plate method is all about portion control so I'm gonna tell you half of your plate half of your plate should be your vegetables and you can throw fruits in with it so half of your plate should be vegetables um, and I always tell people make it colorful so if you're gonna have your broccoli throw something red on there you know your peppers or, or throw some squash uh, along with you know your greens okay so make your plate colorful so half of your plate should be um, vegetables one-third one-fourth 
one fourth of your plate um, should be um, your starch or your grains, okay, if that's what you're going to do. And the other one fourth of your plate should be your protein. Now, when it comes to portion control, you got to remember. So your, uh, your vegetables, you usually use a cup. You can get a cup of your vegetables. For your starches, your starches should only be a half of a cup. Half of a cup. And when you think about a half of a cup, um, that may be like a golf ball size, really, a half of a cup. Like if you're eating a, a so, uh, like if you're eating a pancake or a waffle, it should only be the size of a DVD. Yeah, that, you know, like a pancake house or uh, I don't know, whatever those other pancake houses, you know, they like give you a stack of three. Yeah, no. So your pancake or waffle should only be a DVD size. If you think about your protein, most protein should be like three to four ounces, uh, five, three to four ounces for females, uh, uh, four to five ounces for males. So when you at that steakhouse and they say 12 ounce ribeye, that's big enough for probably three people together. So a protein um, should be the size of your palm. Okay, so your piece of meat should be the size of your palm or uh, a deck of cards. Okay. Uh, when you're thinking about, let's see, cheese, say you eat cheese, uh, a serving of cheese is like six small dices, so not the whole bag as you get it, <laughs> not the whole bag. So those are things, those are like practical reasons way you should do portion control. So once again, you can go to choosemyplate.gov and they talk about um, things that you also should avoid um, that according to your age and gender and activity level, so, of course, fried foods, okay, fried foods, high salt content foods, um, things with added sugar. So, uh, I always tell people you don't want to drink your calories, so you want to stick to water or non-caloric uh, um, beverages. But believe it or not, some of those that have sweeteners actually will increase your increase your, your thirst or increase you wanting to uh, eat more. So, be careful of those low-calorie or no-calorie sodas and things. So I say reduce your sodas and fruit juices um, so that you don't, you're not drinking your calories. Now when it also comes to your carbohydrates, I like to tell people, <clears throat> I hope no one's offended by this, but I like to tell people you have to be a food racist. I don't eat anything white. So white rice, white potatoes, white bread. I don't eat it because that those will have those simple sugars that increase your carbohydrates more than the complex carbohydrates like the whole grains, whole grains and wheat bread versus so your white bread, your brown rice, your brown or your, your, your vegetable pasta. So they have either the wheat pasta or vegetable pasta. Um, they have... Um, yeah, I saw the zucchini pasta, which is like, it actually tastes pretty good. Spinach pasta, zucchini pasta, that actually tastes pretty good. Um, sweet potatoes versus plain white potatoes. So, um, and so those are the, the simple things you can make a change to it. Um, you want to reduce your butter um, content. Your, I know, butter is always good, right? Especially when you're baking those cakes during these holidays. Um, so when you're baking and you, 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 you can try substitutes and think about substitutes you're using. So are you, um, are you going to use like a, a, a cream cheese or sour cream to make it more creamy and fluffy than the butter? Um, some people use yogurt um, to, as, as substitutes. So there's uh, actually, yeah, there, it, there's on the website, there's so many substitutions you can use. Um, but you, oh, once again, if you want to use your milk or your butter, it's just go to non-fat. Non-fat, it works too. It really does. And it still can be very, very tasty. So um, that's one thing you can do. Uh, let's see what else I want to talk about. So you're building your healthy habit. And when you're eating out, so I actually uh, have an ebook out there called Seven Tips to Eating Healthy While Dining Out and Traveling. And it's very diabetic friendly, diabetic friendly. So number one is portion control. So we, I just talked about the portion control. 
Well, one of the things when you're eating out, so when you're eating out, you order it. So monitor what you're eating. Um, also, uh, it's known that the American uh, diet, they'll serve you just way too many, double portion. So when I get something at dinner and I'm like, oh, I can't eat all of this. Can I, you want to half it. And so it's, it's great thinking about why don't you end up sharing meals? Like some of the dinner portions, you can actually share meals with, with whoever you're having dinner with. If you're having dinner by yourself, just ask them for the takeaway box or to go box right away. Because if you sit there, eat it, eat it, eat it, and say, oh, can I have a to go box? And then it'll take them another 15 minutes to go get it and come back. And you sit there, eat it, eat it, nibble, nibble, you ate some more. And then you're like, oh, I'm way too full now. So I get the to-go box in the beginning and I half it and put it away and take it for another meal for tomorrow, lunch, whatever you're having for dinner, okay? So portion control. Uh, I talked about the plate. Make sure your plate, you can do it on, make sure your dinner plate is no greater than nine inches uh, because that makes a difference. And if you had a buffet, um, of course you can always go back, but you never, you never know how satisfied you're gonna be before instead of pouting everything up. So plates should be even. Plates should not be piled up, like stuff on top of stuff. Make sure that plate is even. And, there, and every piece of food on your plate should be touching a part of the plate, not on top of another. It should be touching the plate. So that's one thing about, remember sauces and salad dressings, get them on the side because they only should be like a teaspoon or a tablespoon, uh, like salad dressing that you're getting. Uh, and remember half a cup of the starch, half a, uh, three or four ounces of the, of the protein that's the size of your palm of hand or deck of cards, okay? Um, make substitutions so n number two eating out make substitutions and talk to the waiter and they can say they'll be like no nah, substitutions or that's an extra charge well think about it is uh 50 cents extra a dollar extra worth you saving your health and your glucose level uh, <clears throat> find out what kind of oil they it's like oh do they use canola oil do they use olive oil what kind of oil are they cooking this in if you're gonna have something fried uh, find out if your veal was uh, battered with bread crumbs. What kind of bread crumbs? White bread crumbs? Were they croutons? Did it come processed already? So that's another thing. So a lot of restaurants, if they say fresh, and he's like, well, I want to change it. They're like, yeah, they can't change it. You can't change the breading or anything like that. This is probably processed. They ordered it processed. Um, so. Uh, make sure that your meats and things like that are fresh and that because you because if it's freshly cooked or freshly prepared anything can be changed in a restaurant otherwise they're just getting it out of a frozen box and, and preparing it that way so watch out for things like that other ads on it like salsa <clears throat> salsa uh, the and the let's see like um, oils mayonnaise ketchups Get that all inside. You know, ketchup. You look at next time you look at a bottle of ketchup. Look at the serving size and look at how much sugar is in ketchup. Yeah, that would be surprising. Um, that's why a lot of diets, diets, say no ketchup, but you can use mustard. Yeah. So watch for those add-ons. So yeah. So number three, add-ons, croutons for your salads. Croutons. Uh, get it without the croutons. Uh, you know, if you get something smothered with cream sauce, I always tell people, like, if you get at a restaurant and you're getting something smothered with cream sauce, first of all, why are they smothering it? That's way too much sauce, okay? And second of all, are they smothering it to hide something? So that's why I say, get your sauce on the side. Get your sauce on the side. Even they say, oh, smothered pork chops. Okay, okay first of all, more pork chops baked or grilled. Um, to make sure that it's the right temperature and evenly cooked, the pork should be evenly cooked, and then get it on the side. You can add on or dip it in as you need it, okay? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, number four, once in a dining out, make your request. Make the request that you want. Um, order the meal any way you want. Please don't have them rush you. And I know in and out of the restaurants, they're trying to turn tables over. They say, what you want, you want, you want. And you know what? That's the beauty about traveling and like eating in Europe. They don't rush you. 
meals are supposed to be enjoyed. They're supposed to be a social event with whoever you're eating with or even by yourself because I eat by myself, get a book. But it's a social event for me. So you shouldn't be rushed, okay? So don't let them rush you. Um, choose what you want and say, well, can you go find out from the chef and come back? I mean, of course, if you're in a time factor, like you're doing lunch for, for business or, you know, coming from work, trying to get lunch and move out, but you still should know what you want. And that's the key add-ons. You get, are you getting your corned beef with the sauerkraut? What's the add-on? What's the, what's, the, what's the sauce that you're using? You can get it without. Um, do alternatives to fried. Once again, fried. Try to avoid the fried foods. It's boiled, <laughs> broad, boiled, um, grilled, blackened, roasted, roasted. I mean, even even potatoes can be roasted. Okay, remember, potatoes can be roasted. They don't have to be French fries. Uh, your pizza. Think about pizzas and the crust. It, what, what kind of crust? What dough do they use for your pizza? You know, I know they have a lot of different uh, crust out there now. You can or order the wheat crust you can order or even if you just get in the regular dough crust try thin crust and then it's not so much breading uh, you're reducing your carbohydrates that way loaded up with vegetables you know most of the time we like the meat special six different meats and then one tomato how about six different vegetables and you know try to use the fresh meat on your on your pizzas Instead of pepperoni, pepperoni is a processed food. It's going to be high in sodium, um, and the, as processed, it's going to increase your sodium content. It's going to increase your blood pressure. So try to do the ground beef or the beef, or use the so choose one of those meats, um, the fresh meats. Even if you want the pork, get the ham instead of the pepperoni because that's more fresh than processed right there. Uh, so make sure you do that. Um, chicken and um, turkey. Um, I suggest skinless or skinless because the skin itself will ho ho have the high fat content that you have. So let's see. Uh, number five, like I said, don't drink your calories. So uh, water is an excellent choice for any hydration. I'm going to tell anybody that anytime because you know that's my big peeve about the, they like, what's your number one tip for people on traveling? Stay hydrated. It will be. So, and so for diabetics, stay hydrated, drink your water, okay? Is there a thing that you can drink too much water? Yes, you can get oversaturated with water. So know your limitation. Also, you can get oversaturated um, if you like have heart failure and if you're on a restricted water diet. So if you're on a restricted water diet by your physician, uh, you're already taking a water pill, stick with that. Um, but I just always tell people, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated, hydrated, hydrated. Um, so the high high sugars. If you want something fizzy and bubbly, you want a carbohydrate, get the carbonated water. Get some carbonated water if that's what you want on bu bubbles. Tonic water. You know, you can always and they add a little flavor to that. Uh, number six, eating out. Timing is, is all about timing. Like I said, you, your body is used to eating at a certain time or wants to eat at a certain time. So make sure that you try to stick to the timing. Your lunch, your, your breakfast, your lunch. Don't skip breakfast because don't skip any meals. Try not to skip any meals. But um, your breakfast, your lunch, and dinner uh, should be rolling about the same time because if you're not eating at the same time, you get a hormone called ghrelin. And I call it gremlin because your gremlins will start acting up and like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And that's why people get hangry. So it start acting up and then you want to eat more. And it, that, that hormone say, oh, well, you missed a meal or you didn't feed me at a certain time. So you really need to give me more. And that's why you end up overeating uh, when you do finally eat. So, so and also well, make reservations, you know, just make reservations at wherever you're going. If they let you call ahead or make reservations uh, to avoid waiting um, for eating. Because then if you go and still have to sit, sit for an hour, uh, then you're starting to get hungry at that time. And number seven, uh, just don't overindulge and know when to stop eating. Uh, once again, the portion control is very helpful for that. You know what you do in plate. Remember, every food has to touch a part of that plate. Don't pile it on. Uh, but <clears throat> did you know that uh, your stomach has a 20-minute delay to your brain? Yes. So you're eating and eating 
uh, and before you're satisfied, it takes 20 minutes for your stomach to send the signal to your brain to say, I'm full, stop eating. I'm satisfied, stop eating. So if you wait till you actually feel satisfied and full, you're actually gone past satisfaction. So if you're eating what you have on your plate, stop and wait 20 minutes. If you feel that you're still not satisfied, like you go to a buffet, try something else but half the size. So if you had your starch and you want a little bit more than mac and cheese, wait 20 minutes and then go get a tablespoon of it because you already only had a quarter or you only had a half a cup. So now you need a quarter cup, which is like a tablespoon. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so you don't want to get double the size. But wait 20 minutes to see if you're satisfied. Or after you finish your meal, wait 20 minutes. Once again, don't let the waiter rush you. Wait 20 minutes to decide if you want dessert. Because then, or if you want dessert, take it home, you know? And then once again, try to stick with the, you know, um, the fruits. The fruits. Those are always good. So uh, those are some good seven tips for dining out. It's a... Uh, so it was like a PDF ebook, and I am more than happy to send it to you. I'm gonna put the link. Um, if you want it, just just write in the comments. Uh, I'm gonna put the link in it. I forgot what the link is already. So uh, seven tips to um, eating healthy while dining and traveling. Uh, I used to know the link. I'm sorry, that's so bad. I mean, not knowing the link. But I'll put the link in, you can get the link in, you can just download the PDF uh, for it. Nice little colorful pictures to tell you what it is. So I hope this was very helpful for um, diabetics and nutrition, uh, for your, carb remember your carbohydrates, um, and what your carbohydrates is, your starchy, non-starchy, make sure that half of your plate is filled with vegetables, make your plate colorful. Um, and remember portion controls because that's that's some of the key portion controls and don't drink your calories stick to water try to re do just the sodas and fruit juices and drinking a liter of coke I do I do know some people that do it just stop it just stop it I'm just gonna say it just stop it <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I hope that was helpful today of the diabetes 101 nutrition and um, I am available uh, to speak to any groups, conferences, uh, workplaces uh, for to talk about diabetes 101, nutrition, uh, and lifestyle modifications. It's coming up next week to talk about more physical activity incorporated with your nutrition control and do a wrap of the diabetes. I talk about the wellness and diabetes, diabetes healing, nutrition. Hit me up at uh, EvetteMcQueenMD.com. You can go to the speaker section and say, "Hey, we want you to come talk to us," and we'll uh, it'll shoot me an email and we'll get that. Of course, I'm available on all social media at EvetteMcQueenMD, and I'm here to give you wellness, travel tips, um, healthy travel, uh, and just general health education and prevention, particularly about diabetes, uh, diabetes and hypertension. We gotta keep us healthy, healthy heart. Okay, so that's it for now. This is the medical chat room with Dr. Yvette. Ciao for now. Peace and love.